Hello and welcome back to Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your favorite professor, Paul Markle. And uh, this story comes out of Chicago, Illinois. And the title of the story was, 10 Injured When Gun Accidentally Fires. That's right. Apparently, somewhere in Illinois, there is a super gun which has the ability to fire itself whether purposely or negligently, and harm people. According to that headline, the gun accidentally fired itself and hurt 10 people. That's scary that there's a super gun running around there in Illinois. Now, if you are brighter than the average light bulb and you read a little bit into the story, what you'll find out is that a human being put a live round of ammunition into a shotgun pointed it at the floor of a local shooting sports club, and squeezed the trigger. Well, as it was designed to do, the gun went bang. You know, shotguns are designed that when you put ammunition into them and then press the trigger, they're supposed to fire. It was not an accident. All right. Now, we've talked about this before, but hey, apparently it's just going to keep on happening. So, let's reiterate. Police officers don't call vehicle crashes accidents. Cops don't refer to vehicle crashes as accidents. We refer to them as crashes. Why? Because it's not an accident. Very, very rarely, like four-leaf clover unicorn rarely, does when two cars smash into each other, is it an accident. It's somebody did something they weren't supposed to do, or they failed to take a certain precaution or action, such as they failed to stop at the red light. That's not an accident. That's you failing to stop at the red light and plowing on through and running into somebody. When you drop a live round of ammunition into the breech of a shotgun, close the action, put your digit on the trigger, and pull it backwards, and it goes boom, and people get hurt, that's not an accident. That is negligence. That is you doing something you should not have done. Now, if a person has a negligent discharge, does that mean they're a bad person? No, doesn't mean they're a bad person. Doesn't mean we should, you know, hang them from the nearest tree. What it means is when that, something like this occurs, we need to examine it and say, okay, good guys, legitimate good guys. Is there a way that we could prevent this from happening again in the future? Or are we just going to keep on making the same mistakes over and over again? And that's the worst thing that we could do is just say, huh, stuff happens and drive on. No, we can't do that. We have to be more responsible than that than to just say, oh, mistakes happen and, you know, it was an accident. So, no, no, no stop. First of all, obey the four rules. The four universal safety rules, firearm safety rules, they're out there, they're available, start following them. Number one, treat all guns as if they're always loaded all the time. Pretty simple, right? Number two, never let the muzzle cross anything or cover anything you're not willing to destroy or willing to put a bullet or a round of ammunition into. Or number three, keep your finger off the trigger until you've made the decision to fire or your sights are on the target and you've made the decision to fire. And number four, know your target, what's around it and what's beyond it. Those are really, really simple rules. And I know if you guys who have uh, memberships at you know shooting sports clubs or sportsmen's clubs, you go to the club and how many range rules or club rules do they have? Dozens, dozens and dozens of rules. Well, I'm of the opinion that the more rules you add to the firearm safety rules, the less likely that people are going to read and obey and follow all of those rules. Let's face it. If, you're at a, if you are at a club and they have a list that starts at the ceiling and runs to the floor and there's 37, 38, 42 rules on that, how often are you going to A, read all those rules, memorize them, and know that you're following them? Holy hell, I was at a member of a club one time that literally had the range rules painted on a board that went from the ceiling all the way to the floor. There were that many. And guess what? Never allow the muzzle to cover anything you're not willing to shoot or destroy wasn't one of the rules. How can one of the four not be part of the rules? I don't know. Well, actually, I do know because gun golfers or skeet and trap shooters get mad at me all you want. 
too bad. You know you guys are out there violating this. They treat guns like pitching wedges or nine irons. How many times have you been on a skeet or a trap range and see guys with shotguns balanced on their feet? Or they just hold it like a two by four and they're walking around muzzling the whole world. And they say, oh, it's okay, it's not, it's not loaded. Really? It's not loaded until it is loaded, which is exactly what happened in the sportsman's club in Illinois. You know, Johnny thought that he was putting a snap cap a dummy round into the breech. He thought he was going to lo safely lower the hammer of the shotgun onto a snap cap in the middle of the shooting club. Well, a bad thing happened because guess what? He mixed up and he thought, well, if he'd have been following the rules, treating all guns as if they're always loaded, all right, never letting the muzzle cover. And if you're like, oh, he pointed it at the floor. Okay, mm, I'll give you that one a little bit. But what happens to number four? Know your target, what's around it, and what's beyond it. Well, let's say the floor is his target. Well, what's around and beyond the target? A whole bunch of people. And uh, number three, keep your finger off the trigger until your sights are aligned and you've made the decision to shoot. All these were violated, and they're not hard. The four universal safety rules are not hard to follow. If you have a basic understanding of the English language, you can understand those rules. Aha, so why don't men follow these rules? Well, they only follow the rules that they agree with or that don't interfere with what they happen to desire or want to do. Great example, balancing the muzzle of a shotgun on your foot or draping the shotgun over your shoulder and just muzzling the whole world. Well, why don't we follow the never allow the muzzle to cover anything you're not willing to destroy rule? Well, we want to balance the gun on our foot like, we're, like it's a cane or a crutch, so we're just going to go ahead and ignore that rule because we don't agree with it. And it's okay the gun's not loaded until it is. Nobody ever had a negligent discharge and said, oh, man, I thought the gun was loaded. Did they? No. What is the first statement out of everyone's mouth when they have a negligent discharge? Oh, I thought it was empty. I thought the chamber was empty. I didn't know it was loaded. Nobody ever says, oh, I know the gun's loaded and I had a negligent discharge. Think about it, folks. Come on. We are better than this. And the fact is, you might think I'm ragging on this guy in Illinois, and I'm really not. Who I'm ragging on is all you people that refuse to follow the four very, very simple universal safety rules. And let's face facts, if, we're an Amer if you're an American gun owner, if you are a gun owner, the media cannot wait for us to screw up so they can make a big deal out of it and they can make the news nationwide. I'm in the South. I'm in Biloxi, Mississippi, and I found out about this story that happened outside of Chicago, Illinois. Why do I know about this? Well, the reason I know about it is because a gun owner hurt people by doing something bad or, well, the gun hurt people. You know, that's the crazy thing. The media always is looking for us to screw up. Let's give them less opportunities to legitimately criticize us. Okay? All right. Now, you guys know that I believe that every firearms owner, every gun carrier, every person who has a concealed carry permit, or if you keep a gun at home for personal defense, you know that I think you should always have a high-quality flashlight with you all the time, every time. If you're carrying a gun on your body, you need to have a light on your body. And uh, my good friend Alan Forkner from Swanson Russell, he uh, hit me to this new product called Terralux, Terralux flashlights, and they have the TT1. I'll hold it up here for you guys to take a look at. This is this flashlight. Not only is it 250 lumens, and it runs on one single 123 lithium battery. It has the standard. It has the momentary. It has the constant. And then check this out, ninjas. It has a strobe too. So. This light right here, it's, it's relatively compact. It's about three inches long. It weighs a couple of ounces. There's absolutely no, re and I just checked online, and they're less than 100 bucks a piece. So there's no reason for you not to have a high quality flashlight on your body all the time. And of course, because we like you, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the link up. If you wanna check out the TT1 flashlight from Terralux, you can just look down on your little computer monitor and there's gonna be a link there for you. So for all things student of the gun, and make sure you're checking out Student of the Gun TV and Student of the Gun Radio, you can go to studentofthegun.com.